What's going on people and welcome to another top 10. Shout out to Smo Love and shout out to Josh as well for voting in the, the community tab. Um, if you two are going to be the only two that are going to be voting going forward, it's literally going to be a case of first come first serves. So whoever gets their vote in first is going to be the winner, obviously, because you both pick different ones. Unless you both pick the same one in the future, it's going to be whoever gets their comment in first will be the 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 subject of the video I'm doing. Um, I'm, I will do the midfielders one, Josh, but Smo Love was the first to comment. So I'm going to be doing top 10 centre-backs today. Um, and just for everyone else that's watching, the goal for this year for my channel is to get to 2,000 subscribers by the 1st of June. I'm not too far off it at all, but I can only get there with your help and your support. So like the video, share the videos, and, and get your friends to subscribe and, and people that you know that would be interested in this sort of thing. Um, and, and join me on the journey to the 2000s. So, top 10 all-time Premier League centre-backs. Let's get into it. Sammy Hippier is in at number 10. Now, I'll be honest, I was struggling to get 10 centre-backs in that I thought were of the standard I wanted. But he's one of the few that I do remember growing up. A leader. More of a just... It wasn't a, an elegant defender. He was more of a defender-fender. Like, he wouldn't really attack. The only time he would get a goal would be the on the odd occasion from a corner with a header. Um, but I thought he did his job well. Um, and probably should have won a bit more with Liverpool while in this time that he, he was there. So Sammy Hippier would be in at number 10. In at number 9, Ledley King. A guy that was riddled with injury that ruined his career. Um, the few times he did play, I thought he was quality. Um, and it's a shame that he had so many injuries because if he didn't have all them injuries, he would have, I think he'd have been a starting centre-back for England more regularly um, and possibly go to a bigger club than Tottenham. So it's a shame and it got to the point where he couldn't train um, with the players and his team and he would just turn up for, for the games but still put in performances that were like man of the match with like bad knees and and God knows what knocks he had. And so Ledley King has to make this list and I don't think he gets spoken about enough. So Ledley King is in and he's in at number nine. Number eight, Jap Stan. Just looked horrible in terms of intimidation. More like your hippier, more of a, a defender, defender. Not, not elegant on the ball, although he could pass the ball. He was okay at that coming from the Ajax and... Like, he could do that side of it, but he was aggressive, he was dirty, he was horrible. And he was a vital part of that United team when he was there as well. So, Jap Stam is in at number eight. Number seven, we got Carvalho for Chelsea. I think we a lot of us remember him more for his, like, his hair and whatever, but he was a quality baller. Um, vital in that partnership with Terry, in that, under that first stint under Mourinho. Winning the first Premier League title with Mourinho. And he was a vital part in that team for Mourinho. He could go into like a holding midfield role as well. And another one that doesn't really get spoken about enough for me. So Ricardo Cavallio has to be in. And he is in at number seven for me. But one that I loved watching. Wasn't blessed of pace, but he was technical. Just just brilliant with the ball. Um, and very clever at reading the game as well. So Ricardo Cavallio, number seven. Number six, Vincent Company. Obviously, all them years at Man City, he was there before it kind of started changing them um, significantly for them in terms of challenging for titles and that. And then he was there to experience and lead them to titles as well. Bought as a, as a midfielder originally for City, got moved to the back. Quality. He could easily play in that team right now. They're doing brilliantly defensively this year, Man City. Um, and, and he was doing that before, do you know what I mean? So, company has to be in, and that goal he scored in... I think it was against Leicester. You remember it like went right in the top corner. Like no keeper is getting it from a centre back. And Aguero is going, no, don't shoot. Quality. I watched that game live, and and that goal from the technique and the power and being able to do that because he was good technically um, and he was a good passer of the ball. But again, he was more of a defender first, um, and he pulled that off in when you need a leader and your captain and you're struggling. And he's the, probably one of the least you expect to do that sort of thing that he did. And he pulled it off. Quality player, quality leader. Vincent Company, number six. In at number five, the original Arsenal captain, Tony Adams. Look, he was a tiny bit before my time. But I do remember catching the end of his career. And that goal that I think it was bold that set him up. And he was 
one of his last games. It might have even been his last game for Arsenal. Won the league. Um, but the quality of that finish, I remember as well. I can't even remember who it was against. I just remember seeing the replay of that goal on Sky Sports and that over the years. Again, the technique for it and, and how he, he controlled the ball and then finished it. Quality from a centre-back. That was more of your old-fashioned centre-back, again. But he showed in that moment that he had technique, that he had quality. Um, and he was a leader for Arsenal, won many titles with them. Um, and let's not forget, he done all that and he wasn't involved in the Invincibles team because he was gone by that point. But beforehand, he was there building for them. And then he went on to do what they did with the Invincibles. But he did it, bef like, obviously they didn't go unbeaten in a season before, but he was there winning titles before all that Invincible stuff happened. So a quality player, um, had his demons off the field, but when it come to match day, you could rely on him. So Tony Adams, number five. Number four, Rio Ferdinand. A lot of people would have him as their number one. I, I don't hate that. Um, but I was never his, his biggest fan. I probably look back on it now and appreciate him more. And I do do that with certain players. Wayne Rooney's another one that I've done that with. Didn't really appreciate him as much at the time as I, I probably should have. But once he retired, I, I look back now and I think, I don't know why I didn't like appreciate him as much. Um, but, but Rio Ferdinand, number four, quality on the ball. More of a ball-playing defender but could be aggressive and defend as well, obviously, but more of an attacking centre-back as well. Um, drived forward a lot, great technique, great speed, recovery pace, good in the air, um, aggressive, determined, won many titles again as well, and that mindset as well. So, And shout-out to the five podcasts that they do, I love that stuff. So, vibe for five. Um, Rio Ferdinand, number four for me. Quality, quality. Um, didn't appreciate him enough when he was here playing, but looking back now, I definitely have a lot more appreciation for him. Number three, Sol Campbell. Some of my um, most memorable moments of, of Sol were for England rather than Arsenal. The 98 header that he scored against Argentina that should have stood. And then I think he scored one against France in Euros. They both got disallowed. And they are, from what I remember, they both should have been given. So in terms of standing up and being counted and turning up for your national team, when you need them and struggling a bit, like I mentioned with company did for City, he did that for his country, Sol, on numerous occasions and didn't reap the rewards or the benefits for it because we were cheated and he was cheated. Sol Campbell is very underrated for me. Um... Involved in the Invincibles team, a rock-solid defender, obviously had his time at Tottenham, did the controversial switch to Arsenal, but it was just a beast, a beast of a baller to get past. Um, aggressive, quick for his, someone his size, good in the air, hard to beat one-on-one, -on -one. read the game well as well, it was just very well-rounded, I thought, um, and one of, when I think of centre-backs, one of the most memorable that I remember watching and having images of in my head growing up and just remembering certain key moments, like I said, for England. So, Sol Campbell is in at number three. Coming in at number two, Nemanja Vidic. I always preferred him to Rio and their partnership they had, but that partnership was, was quality. Um, the only one I would put up there with it would be the Terry and Carvalho partnership. Um, but Vidic and Ferdinand were just the amount of titles they won and the chemistry they had. They both offered different things. Vidic was the more of the aggressive centre-back, the more old-fashioned of the two. Rio was the more of the ball player. Um, and probably a little bit more versatile than Vidic. But in terms of just putting your neck on the line, your head on the line, dying out on the pitch, he would go out and die for you, Vidic. And I don't think he gets the credit he should either. He does get quite a bit of credit, but I always feel like a lot of people prefer Rio to Vidic. Now, that's fine. Everyone's got their own opinions, but I've always preferred Vidic. Because I think he's more old school. He's more... He's just nastier. And I do like a ball-playing centre-back, especially in the modern game. But during the times growing up in the noughties, um, in the late 90s, he would have fit in in the late 90s. And he's just... He was very aggressive, as I said. Strong. Not the quickest, but not the, the slowest either. Good reader of the game. Maybe he could have been a bit better on the ball. But to be honest, I want my defender to defend first and he did that so Vidic quality player won numerous titles and things with, with United and one that I was sad to see go a great leader Nemanja Vidic number two drum roll please John Terry number one what he did at Chelsea 
look, I've got to thank him for that Champions League final when he slipped for the penalty because it gave United the title for the Champions League. For Chelsea, though, that first time when, when Mourinho went in, there was him, Carvalho, Terry, Lampard. Them three specifically in the team, Terry, Lampard and Carvalho, I thought were... It's literally the spine of the team. And it, without them three, I don't think they would have gone on to do what they did with Mourinho. And just a servant to the club as well. I know he, he left later on in his career to to go to Villa and not whatnot. But when you're talking about set pieces and being a danger in, in the air with headers... He's, I don't think I've ever seen anyone as good as him at centre-back. He, he used to always just seem to win the headers. Even if he didn't score from him, he'd always win the headers. Um, wasn't the tallest, wasn't the strongest, but he had a leap on him and he had that determination to win them aerial balls. And that stood out to me as a youngster. Always won his headers. Great player, underrated on the ball as well. He could play, um, ping balls diagonally up the pitch as well, just... A quality player. I don't think he gets the recognition he should for his ball playing ability as well. But look, I feel like he should have won something with England as as we had so many talented players during that time for England as well. Um, but I thought he led for England very well as well, even though we didn't win anything. I feel like he led like Beckham led as a captain. It was more vocal than Beckham probably. But he, do you know what I mean? Lead by example, not just vocally as well. So, John Terry, I think, is the best centre-back I've ever seen in the Premier League. Coming up through the youth ranks at Chelsea as well. Like, learnt his trade. Learnt from the likes of Desailly, Le Berth, And then he went on to do what he did with, with that partnership that, that he had with Carvalho, as I said. Um, and if it weren't for Terry in that Chelsea team, they wouldn't have done what they did. Let alone Lampard and, and uh, Carvalho. But Terry, I don't think people understand what he did for that club. And the legend that he is at Chelsea, and rightly so. Um, so that is my list, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. My top 10 all-time Premier League centre-backs. And the next one I'll be doing will be my top 10 all-time Premier League midfielders. Shout out to Josh for that. That will be coming soon, mate. Um, appreciate you guys voting in the community tabs. I'm going to be using that a lot more now just to see what people want more than other things in terms of content. So make sure you vote on there, guys. I appreciate the support. Share it to your mates, as I've said, and anyone you think that you would like this sort of content. And remember, guys, before I go, the target is 2,000 subscribers by the 1st of June. I'm not too far off it, so help me, join me along the journey, and help me get there, and we can do it together. Appreciate you guys, and I'll see you soon.